Hey folks, this is Ben from Dankless Wargaming. Hey, this is Heath from Team Tim War Hawaii. And welcome to the Path to Redemption, the Warhammer 40,000 Dark Angels podcast, where we aim to provide Dark Angels players with the tactical and hobby skills that they need in order to enjoy this wonderful hobby of ours. Welcome to this April episode of the podcast. We start with a slew of Dark Angels releases. Uh, due to the balanced data sleep dramatically changing how our lists are going to play competitively, uh, we're not really going to spend a lot of time on lists this week outside of Heath and I talking about games we've played with the new data slate. And then we're going to take a look at some of the 10th edition previews that have come out since our bonus episodes at the end of March. Uh, Heath hit the books a little bit, um, and we're going to take a look at some lists with how we might use the Lion. All right, so we're going to look a bit at that. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if Heath and I's workbench was left in desolation by this month's hobby challenge. And last but not least, we want to listen to what you have to say as our listeners and check out our community comments. So looking at the new releases, we can get Azrael, Primaris Azrael, individually for $45. Boom. And got him go. right there. Nice. Yep. I got mine of my Soul Forge box. Mm -hmm. uh, got it picked up like a week ago, so I got mine built here. Interesting thing. I don't know if I missed some pieces. I don't think I did, but kind of remember how people were mad about the, ro the Rogel Door not having all the bits you needed to actually like finish building the model. Like I was aware the, of that. Like the bottom oh, of the, the Rogel the Door. Oh, the tank. Just, like, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The tank, yeah. yeah. Like the bottom side of Azra, I don't know if you can see this, but like some of the, his armored legs just there's... Unless, I don't yeah, think yeah, I yeah. The piece. I, I ran into that today. No. Um, they just like, they figure that you know, you're, the, the base is going to cover that. You're not going to see in there. Right. So I guess if you really wanted to, you could fill it with, uh, you could fill it, but it's, um, I, I spent some, like the, so if you ever build this guy, right, the, his right leg and how it connects to the inner skirt of the robe is a little tricky. Um, yeah. And it took me some time to figure out how to get it on there. And I glued it the wrong place at first. Uh, okay. all I can probably the, the best advice I can provide is that um, you know, that inner, uh, the inner, like the, the, the right leg bit, uh, it doesn't glue inside the, that portion of the robe. It glues to the side of the portion of the robe, right? Where like okay. part of the, the molded robe is on that leg. So I was initially trying to glue it inside it and it just didn't, it just didn't make sense. So, um, and the, the instructions aren't super clear. So I okay. guess if you ever get it and or look can't figure it out, feel free to shoot me a line on YouTube or something, and I'll help you out. But it was not it was not easy to figure out. It was not intuitive, okay. to say the least. Right, I, yeah, I had to do some dry fitting to figure it out myself. So mm -hmm. that is definitely a thing. Yeah, always uh, dry fit. <laughs> dry fit twice, glue <laughs> once. Exactly. Uh, then we have the lion and his retinue for 110. For any of you lucky guns out there that got a hold of it, there Heath's got his. So amazing, friendly local game store for the win. That's all I can say. Yeah, there we go. They were able. They uh, they got their allocation, and I I got I got in early enough to get one of them. Do not pay the scalper prices. Um, I would also hey, can I also jump in for a second on that? Um, yeah. So I got a backup. So this is a uh. Resin printed model from 3D Art Guy that was $35. Not bad. That's not bad at all. Not bad. Um, so that was kind of like my backup, and I thought I might want to practice how to paint the armor before I actually start. So it's fair. And it looks like and it's about is, the right uh, size, yeah. $35, yeah, $35 is, pretty, is pretty fair. It's pretty accessible. So um your friendly local spiky bits is where I where I pick that up. You know, a lot of people have opinions about about Rob Bear. Um, I have engaged in a number of business transactions with him over the years and never been shorted once. So, you know, like uh, B pills and clickbait aside, you know, he runs a solid business. So, well, and he is uh, real chill to talk to and he, uh, very approachable at conventions because I literally walked up to him at Adepticon and was like, "Hey, Rob, I heard you guys talking about." a uh, certain aspect of the hobby uh, on the uh, podcast last mm -hmm. week. So I brought you and Kenny something to enjoy from work. And mm -hmm. he, I caught him up the next day and he's like, yeah, that was awesome. And I'm like, there you go. Asking you shall receive. So Indeed. 
Really chill on that front. So, Arcs of Omen, The Lion, $60 for the book. He's dropping fat sacks of cash this month. Amazing. <laughs> Son of the Lion, hard <laughs> Son of Lion hardcover twenty seven dollars. Let's see it. He... I can't. I, I can't. I have a Kindle. I have it on Kindle. Oh, you Kindled it? Okay. Yeah, okay. I can. So like... I tried. I put the order in, and I was at my game store like five minutes before opening at the door yesterday, and because we're recording this on Sunday, and they're like, "No." I was like, "I was like." He's like. So the the guy was like, "Hey, so someone I don't know how I knew, but he pre ordered the Lion novel in twenty twenty one." I was like I did I would have if I knew I could do that. Like wow. so please in the future put me down for anything just consider me I don't know. But um yeah I would have liked to have gotten a copy of the hardcover uh but you know there's a lot of consternation about you know scalpers buying them up and no one's like I want the story. I would like to have the you know maybe in a few months I'll go back on there and see if any scalpers are willing to part with them for a lower price. Uh I'm not going to pay over retail for it though. So but uh, I've read the story and it's great. I really enjoyed it. We can talk about that later. Awesome. Okay. I thought I knew there was a third book, uh, Angels of Darkness, twentieth anniversary edition, hardback, thirty bucks. I just realized because I knew there was the the Son of the Lion, and then there was this other book I got in the notes, which is Legends of the Dark Angels for twenty one dollars. And I'm like, there was a third book, and it was a Gav Thorpe book. All right, and you got Legend. There it is. Yes, yeah, so that's twenty one. This is a thick, chunky boy. Oh, I like the it's an, it. Is an, it is an omnibus, right? This is four novels, one novella, and several short stories by Gav Thorpe and CZ Dunn. So nice. Yeah. So yeah, right. I uh, I <laughs> I supported the first legions. Um, yeah, Minotaur, you know, Minotaurum this week. I I spent a lot of money on Dark Angel stuff, but that's fine. It happens. Okay. So uh, <laughs> that's that's the new releases for this week. Or this month for April. Mm. Uh, going into what would be the Meta Watch section, uh, we don't have, like we mentioned, that there's a lot of stuff that I want to do the research. The lists are all lists that are pre data slate, so very much not going to be very helpful going forward because if you try and run them, they will not work the same way that they did at these events. So yep. Heath and I are going to take a look at a uh, game each and I, he and I have played with the new data slate. And then take a look at some of these 10th edition previews since the bonus episodes. And so, uh, do you want to go first, Heath, or do you want me to go? Uh, sure. Let me get it pulled up. So, I uh, I ran, I played a game at the LGS. Um, I ran a list that did not. So, the big things, obviously, is Inner Circle's gone and um, Codex Warfare changed. So I was like, okay, we'll see how this goes. I I think that it's going to be okay because once again, you know, I'm known for playing, you know, Green Wing, right, or Tri Wing, and the rest of the book is still really good. Like like Dark Angels have a very effective implementation of the basic Space Marine Codex. Uh, so I'll just run down the list real quick, and I'll I'll get it to you, uh, Bailey, so you can throw up on the on the graphics or something. But uh, so uh, Azrael with his with his Warlord trait, Ezekiel with Mind Worm and Aversion. And righteous repugnance, a talent master with uh, the arbiter's gaze, then five assault intercessors, uh, five infiltrators with a helix gauntlet, and the assault intercessors had a thunder hammer on the sergeant. A then a judiciar with honor of the first legion, so he's got a six inch rogue intervention. Uh, the selfless healer apothecary, and five assault centurions. Oh, nice. There it is. <laughs> so there's the brick. Um, so then uh, four Inceptors, uh, five Desolation Marines with a Mastercrafted Vengor Launcher, five more Desolation Marines, and then five Eradicators with a multi melta. So right. that is the name of that list is Yetus Deletus. <laughs> I can see that. Uh, so you just cluster around Azrael and take in cover and just take a bunch of saves. And then go forth and do your damage. Uh, I played against a guy, kind of a fluff list. Uh, it was a bunch of how was his? It was a it was Vashtor with you know and Vashtor's like chaos okay, marines, yeah. and then uh, he had half of it was uh, Mechanicum, 
which is Adeptus Mechanicus, because he's like, I want him to be Dark Mechanica. I'm like, sure, whatever, that's oh, fine, okay, right? That's cool. So, so it was, a, it was, it wasn't probably technically legal, but it was interesting, and I'd never played against Mechanica before. So, um, but Vastor's, uh, Vastor's a Vastor's a chunky. He's a good. He's he's, he's good. Uh, nice. And but like this list just just murdered everything. Um, he tried its weakness is it's very short range, right? It has a 24 inch range basically from the, with those eradicators, uh, and the centurions. But, um, he charged, you know, the, the centurions with a venom crawler, the Judas Yar made him fight last and the vent and the centurions just punched it to death. Um, <laughs> moved up, got charges off, right? Like all of it, like charged through all of his possessed, you know, wiped another squad possessed off the table of shooting. Um, my eradicators bounced off Vashtor, and Vashtor jumped behind my guys and then killed my Talon Master. Because um, Vashtor's weapon does four flat mortal wounds to vehicles. And he has a, a power that can make vehicles, like, just ha their weapons number of shots are halved, which is crazy. And their strength is reduced as well. So it's real, real bad for Talon Masters. It's really effective against him. But um, yeah, the the desolation squads. Um, I'm not super. I don't know into things with armor saves. It just kind of bounces off because of indirect fire. The way indirect fire works right now, right? But into this unit of ten cultists, gone, <laughs> just yeah. gone. Um, and uh, he had Skatari rust or the rust stalkers, right? Which have three wounds, but they don't have a good save. And that master crafted Vengor launcher just gone. So nice. did a lot of, a lot of good damage. There. I don't know. So just the, just the green wing list did a lot of damage. Now all the centurions died. Cause once they get out from underneath the five up or sorry, the four up in, in vol and the apothecary bubble, they're pretty vulnerable. And his, his obliterators just shot them to death. But, uh, like I traded, you know, I, I had a lot of efficacy left and he, and I had basically wiped him down to like one unit of like two, um, Adeptus Mechanicus robots. And that was okay, it. Yeah. yeah. yeah and oh, nice. that was like, called it at the, at the bottom of three. And he was like, I'm, I'm done. Everything's just gone. So but yeah. Um, those, uh, the breachers, the cataphract, the cataphron breachers with the plasma guns, Oh, yeah. Those things have a two up save and a four up invul. I did not know that. That's crazy. <laughs> they are tough to interact with. But overcharged inceptors with three damage plasma gets the job done eventually. So yep. yeah. Um. So as is finally, is it tournament? Um. This list wouldn't obviously. I just wanted to try the centurions. I would honestly probably still run one unit of five Deathwing. Um. Because they are more durable than the Terminator than the. They're more durable than the Centurions, to be honest, because the invul save, right? Um, but we can talk more about that when we get to the what are what are plans for the lion. So how how did yours awesome. work out? So I ended up going second against Tau. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, oh cheer, up... cheers, man! Oh god. Oh. <laughs> Wait till you find out. So so I'll tell you what I got. I'll tell you a little bit about what he had, and then you'll <laughs> you'll realize just how much up a creek I was. Uh, so I had Primaris Azrael, had the Chaplain on Bike with Decisive Tactician, Master of Sanctity, Paragon, Wise Orator, um, Catechism of Fire, Exhortation of Rage, uh, and then Right Litany, and then Salt Intercessor Squad, Incursor Squad, Infiltrator Squad. Uh, this was just sort of because mm. I wanted to try something new. I threw in three Aggressor, aggressors. Black, so yeah. Uh, okay. Five man Deathwing squad with the sergeant had the Thunderhammer Storm Shield. Then everybody else took Chain Fists and Storm Bolters. And I threw a missile launcher in there because it was only a five man. Uh, I broke out my five man Relic squad that I got done at Christmas just because I wanted to have um, some board clear. I wanted to be able to clear out Fire Warriors, basically. Okay. I mean, I didn't know I was playing Tal until after. I, my buddy Rich, he plays Tal, Sisters, um, and Eldar. So I didn't know what I was going into when I built the list. And he was like, this is what I'm bringing Tal. I'm like, okay, well, this is still has a chance. But basically, I had an anti-vehicle Terminator squad and an anti-infantry squad. And that was sort of the idea. Uh, five Plasma Inceptors, because I also want to eat and delete. Two Thunderstrike mm -hmm. Storm Speeders. Uh, and then five Hellblasters with an Impulsor. 
and Ezreal, right? And then Primaris Ezreal goes in there because since I don't have like a, a, a dedicated death bubble and or death ball in this list, I was like, I'm going to do the Heath thing and put the Plasma guys in the tank. So, uh, I go second. I've put uh, the infantry on the board, the tank with Ezreal on the board, uh, with the with the uh, Hellblasters, and the two Thunderstrikes, and then everything else is either in Deep Strike or Strategic Reserves. Okay. I just, I just hit everything, because I was like, if I don't hide some stuff, I'm just going to die. Oh, and I had five, I had six Ravenwing Knights as well, because I needed, mm -hmm. I, I went six because I had 30 points to blow, and I'm like, alright, well, I'd rather just bring another one of these and rearrange my whole list. So all that's in Deep Strike. Uh, Ghost Go second. He comes out at me with the. He had double reptides, long strike, and a hammerhead. Uh, the 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 fusion Oof. blaster lady, dark strider, and God. three man crisis suit squad, and then path, two pathfinders and boys, just some boy squads. Um, the I crisis deployed, team all kitted out with uh, drones, I assume. Yeah, everybody's got drones yeah. and all the good stuff. Um, I yeah. took Retrieve behind enemy lines, which I secret agended, and then I took Codex Warfare just because I wanted to see what it would happen. And that was also one of the ideas behind this list, is that I brought a lot of TAC Doctrine Plasma Firepower. That's where the Inceptors are there, the bigger yep. Knight Squad, and then the Aggressors uh, have a lot of shots in Tactical, along with the Terminator Squads with the Swarm Bolter. So I thought, you know, that, that'll be sort of where I get a lot of heat in on that. He took decisive action, the clean victory, and then the one where he's got a touch. So one is like killing things in Kai Young, or he had to kill me. He had to wait till turn three and start killing me with Kai Young, uh, which worked out to hurt him because there was a turn where he overkilled me and therefore could not continue to score points. And he was like, "Oh, that was kind of dumb." Uh, and then there was I don't quite know how all of it worked, but he had one where he had just to go to like the the, the three sides. He only the got targeting it. relays, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of like an engage on all fronts, but better a bit. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I I set up with one of my cursor squads in a table quarter. I thought you know if I go first, the first thing I'm going to do is have those guys retrieve over there because I knew I could get in the other two. Um, mm -hmm. But I went second, so those guys just got annihilated by uh, what do you call him by a riptide. He brought the other Riptide up. He brought up Long Strike, and uh, the other Hammerhead took pot shots at my Thunder Strikes, and basically did no. He missed with everything. Didn't do any damage that's whatsoever. A, that's rare. <laughs> that's that's yeah. good. Ugh. So turn one was Thunder Strikes move into the middle of the board to get line of sight on Long Strike. The Plasma Hell Blasters pop out with Ezreal and light up Long Strike with Weapons of the Dark Age, get him down to two wounds, and then the two Thunder Strikes finish him off because uh, I had some misses uh, in there, unfortunately. So I had to dump them both into him. That sucks. Or just outright kill him. Uh, but that was two points for Codex Warfare right out the gate and a character dead. And basically I'd open up a whole table quarter. Like a whole half of the board was kind of open because the, the two Riptides and... The other hammerhand had moved down because we were doing uh, abandons, no tear down their icons. So we had the table, the corners, and he basically came straight down and across at me with most of his stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh no, it was the two triangle deployments. That's what it was. But basically, he came down one side of the board, like sort of south and east, and then basically the the north east corner was sort of mine to have after I killed Long Strike. Because it was Long Strike and Pathfinders on that side of the board. And that's where Azrael was with the Impulsor and the Hellblasters. So pick up him. I lose my two Thunder Strikes on the next turn. Uh, then he, this is where it was kind of a gotcha, but my buddy Rich, he went up to Depth Comedy and played a lot. So I thought, like, and I explained it like this. These are my Deep Strikers. These are my, my Strategic Reserves. He thought they were all Strategic Reserves. So he didn't Oh, he had a broadside, which he didn't screen out in the back. So on his turn two, the Terminators and the Plasma Inceptors all dropped into his deployment zone. And I went, all right, now I have the points to score behind enemy lines. Started picking up, I picked up three squads in Tac Doctrine that turn. And I brought in the Aggressors with Ezreal 
and they picked up a 10 man squad through the drone. Um, and I was like, okay, so three of these guys with the 3d six and 18 bolter 18 shots, shots minus yeah. one, they picked up stuff. And I'm like, okay, so if you're going to take codex warfare in the new world where everything's capped a squad of just three of these guys, if you put them into the right target, we'll just pick up something for 90 points and that's a victory point. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's a pretty good uh, thing to have. Plus their Gravis, which helps a little bit tougher. If you have them in cover, wound. you can use the one CP stratagem to negate a point of AP, which is good. Yep. So, and yeah. the, and they and their fists aren't too bad. They got the power fists. It's not too bad. Yep. Uh, got in. Tried to get a jump on Plasma Lady. I got in there with my lightning claws and watched his sealed drone save ten out of eleven four plus invulns. Get out of here, God! Yeah, I was not. Sh I was Ugh. very displeased. Shield drones. Shield drones are a real feel bad. So GW, if you're looking into that, please please fix it. <laughs> and then and then the other real there were two other real good feel bads. One was bringing in the black knights to fight a riptide that got onto my my home base objective, supercharging, doing everything, doing no damage to it basically through through the shield drone. And then in the Overwatch, because he was in Cal Young and he rolled sixes, he exploding sixed in and killed five out of the six uh, oh, bikes in Overwatch. Sucks. Oh, that sucks. So that, All right. was, yeah. that was mucho no yeah. fun. And then the last one, this is this was the funniest one. I had left the one aggressor by himself in the Hell Blasters because I knew they were going to get annihilated. I put Ezra on the Impulsor and I was going to move the Impulsor. I moved the Impulsor up. And the idea was, all right, he's going to blow up the Impulsor. I'm going to be able to kind of put Ezreal three inches further forward. And then on my turn, he's going to move into the de enemy deployment zone and then go fight Dark Strider and just like totally doink on him, right? Blows up the Impulsor. All right, I expected that. Roll to explode. Don't explode. Roll for Ezreal to get out. Roll to one. One. <laughs> uh, no. So there was... <laughs> So that was fun. Um, That's so disrespectful. <laughs> oh. So it ended up being seventy-seven to fifty-three to the uh, to the towel guy. Um, there were a couple. There there was some misplay in the sense that like there was a turn where I could have sticking an objective and started running away, and it would have stopped his uh, riptide from taking an objective a turn earlier, and I would have had one more turn of eight points for holding two instead of holding one. Uh, of course, losing Azrael was pretty rough. Uh, Going second was rough because I have set up to tr if I if I had gone first the way the game had played out in a way I would have been able to score. Uh, I got that fourth quarter as I only got three. Uh, but it is I, what it I is. Don't, I don't have a lot of great solutions against Tau. Tower like it's a hard. I don't. I don't have any experience playing against them, and there's just a lot of pro a lot of stuff that they do that I have that I'm not great at. Um, so it's been it's been a few months. And um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to change. Maybe something you, will change. But you just got to bury them. It's like fighting those those two up Invuln Archons. You just got to bury something in dice and and wait for them to fail. Yeah, yeah. That one save that kills the drone, and then you just unload into whatever. You know, you got to have like two things. One thing is to kill all the drones, and then the second thing is what's actually going to try and kill whatever you're shooting yeah. at. Um, yeah. So and lots that, of high uh, volume of strength six shooting. Yeah. Strength six AP one or two shooting. Yeah. Uh, and then with the new uh, the new Codex Warfare, I ended up scoring seven, so I got the destroy. I got a one heavy weapon kill. Then I got four of the tactical kills, and then I got one in melee. And I could have gotten one or two more if Ezreal hadn't died uh, in the explosion because he was going to be able. Actually, I think that I killed Dark Strider with the aggressor. That's what I ended up doing with it. Now that I remember, so, um, I think that the new Codex Warfare is definitely doable. It's it's not yeah. an auto fifteen, which is what it was before, which is what obviously you want in high level tournaments. But um, and I think that like so the br uh, brilliant strategist is still is a really good tool because you can move into tactical and then put one yeah. unit back in the devastator and that still scores right. So your your talent master or your desolation squad is going to be able to stay in that doctrine and do whatever they need to do against it. So that's uh yeah and. Azrael, like being in a transport, prevents him from using some of his most powerful rules because he's in a transport in the command phase. Yeah. But um, pushing him forward with Hellblasters is definitely a good. Play, is definitely good. Or de yeah. pushing him forward with a uh, Blade Guard or something like that. So yeah, 
Yeah, that's so yeah, overall, what do you if, think? If you're gonna put him in a, if you're gonna put him in a transport, you literally have to have nothing else that needs him to do anything the whole yeah. game because you're, you said you're wasting him. And then that list, I was like, I'm just, you know, he doesn't have to stand anywhere and give out an info bubble. He just needs to buff the hell blasters. So in you go. So they, yeah, definitely. Yeah. How how'd you feel about the Deathwing Terminators without uh feel, without Inner Circle? Well, he was really he had a big sad when he fired his entire squad of breachers into the Terminator squad with the Storm Shield, and because I had a Storm Shield, I still saved on a two up, and he got like sixteen wounds through, and I saved every single one except maybe one. Hmm. And he was like, "Well, I just dumped a full ten man squad in and did nothing." And I'm like, uh, "Yeah, I mean, you targeted the squad with the Storm Shield when you could have shot the squad turns, without the Storm Shield." But turns I out a one up save is real good, y'all. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yep. So that was. That was nice. Um, I mean, not having the four up hurt when the riptides and things shot into them, but that's also why I'm not running a ten man squad and trying to score oaths at the moment. I've made a five man squad that was a that was a get in there, infiltrate, um, and try and kill this one. Specific. I think I ended up I had one chain fist guy left at the end, and he had a, like one wound left, and I ended up getting him into melee combat, and he he tried his he tried to do the, his thing. Um, and Inner Circle still played out because he was, like, killing things down to one guy, then going, all right, I need to morale check, and, like, the Incursor failed, the Assault Intercessor Sergeant failed, and he's like, all right, this one Terminator, mm-hmm. I need to see that morale check, and I'm like, he's a Deathwing guy, he has Inner Circle, I mean, they changed Inner Circle, but he still gets to just auto-pass, so I still have this one Terminator yeah. floating around doing stuff, and he's like, I don't like that, and I'm like, so, so Inner Circle still has some value, um, you're not just losing that 35-point model, or 30 uh, point model to morale, 33 point models to morale, so it yeah. still has some value. But, yeah, you definitely have to look at them as a trade piece of the squad comes in, it has one target, it goes after that one thing, and then it will die. And Ninth if you don't have that mentality, so, yeah. it's not going to work out. You're so killy that, yeah, like, definitely breaking into smaller squads so that the return fire doesn't get to hit, kill 10 turniers, only just kill 5. Yeah, I kind of I kind of agree. Like, um, I think some of our comments talk about that a little bit as well. But yeah, um, I don't know. I, I'll try again. Maybe I, I I think there's still I don't know. It's it's yeah, it sucks. Um, but Terminators are still Terminators plus one to hit if you don't move. Still plus one to hit if you don't move. There's still a lot of benefit, a lot of value in those Terminator squads, right? Um, so yeah, um. I don't know if there's anything else to say about that. <laughs> yeah, is, um, yeah. Nope, so it is more, it is. more data awesome. required, but yeah, let's move on. Yep. All right, so looking at terrains, uh, we're looking at the 10th edition previews. First one we got lined up for you is the terrain. So the benefits of cover have changed. Uh, it sounds like the benefits of cover, based on what the article said, is going to consist of this. Models get... Uh, each time a ranged attack is allocated to a model that has the benefit of cover, add one to the saving throw for that attack excluding invulnerable saves. So it's in there, in the writing, in the definition. Do not try and make your invulnerable saves better with cover. Uh, yeah. Models with a save characteristic of 3 plus or better cannot have the benefit of cover against attacks with an armor penetration characteristic of 0. So we're, okay. the, we were just talking about 1-up saves and whatnot. Uh, this is this is the, or the, what is it, the plus 0 saves with storm shields and cover. Uh, that appears to be very much targeted uh, against... Yeah. Uh, but but it's still so like there is still a value to yep. having a space marine in cover because it will negate effectively the first point of AP you get but you're just like if you're a three up save you're never going to roll better than a three up right so they don't go to two up um, and if and I'm telling you like so, so a lot of space marine players are probably upset by this and that's fine like because it was really effective but I'm telling you, Sisters of Battle, oh, my God, everything's in cover. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's so frustrating, right? So, um, yeah, honestly, um, this will probably make the game a little more interactive because, you know, like, there is a benefit. There's a, a benefit to being in cover, but not, like, a complete, I don't know. So I'm not I'm not opposed to it. I see the point. Um, like, you know, there's really no point to being a, you know, like you're 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 wearing power armor. You are cover. You are in cover. It's yeah. called power armor. So um, that does appear to be targeted at one particular play style. Um, so okay, there you go. Uh, don't be afraid to move forward. That honestly, that'll make terminators more valuable. Yep. 
because you know you can't just get a two up save by standing in cover. So, yep. And so um, uh, we've got uh, craters and craters and rubble. Say that only infantry wholly within them get cover. So you have to get everybody okay. packed in there uh, to get it. Or to get for a model has to be wholly within the terrain feature to get the cover. Barricades and fuel pipes. Uh, they have the whole, if you get within two inches of them or within an inch of them, then you can fight something on the other side within two inches. Yeah. So you can use it like a, like a fighting step. So you can yep. be within a gauge range two inches away and battlefield debris, right? Uh, you get, yeah. If, so if the model is not fully visible to every model in the attacking unit, because of this terrain feature, then the model has the benefit of cover. So it's interesting the way they're phrasing this. Uh, so it's like, if the model is not fully visible to every model in the attacking unit because of the terrain feature, that model has benefit of cover. So it seems like cover is still tracked at the model level and not the unit yep. level. Um, and if every model in the attacking unit has to be able to see, right? So, um, so if like half the squad that's shooting is obs- it, like, so you, if you can't stick your head out and be like, I can see you being being with my melted gun, right? That will that will give you the benefit of cover in the battlefield debris. Right. And I think that language is repeated in a couple of other places. So yeah, I yeah. Think it is that's, that's also in the barricades and fuel pipes. And yeah. And uh, yeah. So that language is not repeated in the craters of rubble. So if you're in a crater and rubble, like even if they can see you with everyone in the attack unit, you get the benefit of cover. Right. Um, and ruins, which is the one that everybody seems probably wants to care about two rules here. Uh, if that model, so each time a ranged attack is allocated, allocated to a model, if that model is either wholly within this feature or it is not fully visible to every model in the attacking unit because of the terrain feature, the model has the benefit of cover against that attack. So um, I think one of the things they're trying to say here is that the usual thing where you like toe in to cover, right? So I'm just like my back's up against the wall, but you can see me, but my back's up against the wall. Like, nah, bro, like that's not cover. You have to be in the feature. Right. Um so that's and that's the intent. And the other thing here is plunging fire. And I think this is interesting. So yep. in ninth edition, right? Ninth edition is just so dead killy that you're either not seen or you're dead, right? As soon as someone draws line of sight to you, right? Enough rounds go down range that you're dead. Yeah. So they've already said they're making the addition less lethal. So and so plunging fire is an incentive to actually go into a terrain feature and post up right? And the, and the upper floors like you used to do, right? So you, you can't do that in addition because you're going to be dead. <laughs> so yep, that hap- can't um, confirm at Adepticon. Happened a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So each time a model that is wholly within this train feature makes a range attack, if that model is six inches or more vertically from ground level and every model in the target unit is at ground level, you improve the AP of your attack by one, right? So it's cool. You're shooting at the thin top armor, right? You know, so most yeah. armor isn't sloped or angled, Right or designed to resist, you know, vertical attacks, right? And that's a cool, that's a cool feature. That's a new dimension, a new tactic that we haven't seen in Ninth Edition, right? So there's another simplified but not simple, right? That's a new dimension that we haven't seen yet. So that's cool. Well, and it also it incentivizes you to go into the train feature because if you look at it, what we were just talking about, the key with ruins for Ninth Edition is you stand outside or behind the footprint, right? Yeah, because yeah. you're trying to avoid being seen. Because if you get seen, you get shot unless you're a Terminator with a storm shield. Because then you go stand in the middle of it, so you have that zero up save and laugh in mm-hmm. inner laugh. circle at yeah. it. <laughs> uh, but now you're actually incentivized to go into the building where you can be seen and be shot at. Uh, but you can, but if you can get up onto the second level, you get a benefit. And the one thing that is interesting here is that it says that you have to be six inches or more when the biggest and most important rule for terrain, uh, when it comes to height in ninth edition, is the terrain feature has to be five inches or more for you to get obscuring. This says you have to be at least six. So if you were building a lot of five inch or so terrain features and you kind of stopped at that level not that everything does but if that was sort of where a lot of people were we actually need to go up well, another inch so we might see some yeah people you stand on top of it. A, yeah yeah if you're an organizer you have like you like to make your own at home board uh you might have to redo your train a little bit to get that extra inch to get make this something you can actually play with this 3d print a little cap that goes on top of it another floor for your buildings yeah so yeah so hills and sealed structures right um so basically, this is each time a range attack is allocated to the model, the model is not fully visible to every model in the attacking unit because of the terrain feature. Yep. So it's, again, 
you know, you're you're posted up against a wall, right? And if the spire is coming from not directly in front of you, you can benefit from it. So I, I don't think that's the intent. We'll see how everybody starts to play it. Usually, you know, Goonhammer or Tabletop Titans or somebody will release a thing, and that's kind of what sets the standard for the edition. But well, and uh, at least right. you what can about... still use the reverse of the hill because it, it used to yeah. be kind of like hills really didn't do anything. But it's like actually, if you've ever been out, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're hull down, it's on the hill. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's uh, IRL they... like how how tanks fight, right? Is you yeah. move up so the hull tank is below the hill, and the just the turret is visible. So you're yep. hold down, right? All right, woods. And then, uh, woods. There's a uh, lot see, of words. There's that in this. woods I was telling Good you Lord. need to get for your wood for your. Uh, for I your line know. Model. Oh God, I read that book and I can envision that scene in my head. And I want to do it. <laughs> I really want to do it. Anyway, yeah, so, I've still got that on a tab somewhere on one of my devices. <laughs> so, yeah. So based on the way the model's actually built, where basically it's three trees that make kind of a loop, and you can stand in the middle of the three trees, and, uh, and you can obviously see the models, right? It's, it's supposed to be the idea of trees, not that this is literally where the trees are. It says that mm -hmm. as long as the models, ba it basically breaks down as long as your models are inside the terrain feature, which it's very defined by the floor, the circling floor yeah. part of the trees, you count as being in the trees, and you're never considered to be fully visible when you're inside that little circle because it's the idea of trees, not these are where the trees are. Which is a distinction between war games, right? Because some war games are like, the tree is the tree, you do not move the tree, you know, the tree is where it is. And then there are other games where they're like, this is a forest, the outline are the trees, if you have to move your vehicle in here, move a squad in, we can move the trees around, we have trees, yeah. right? It's, and so this is sort of giving us the idea that we're going to say that these are this is an area of trees, you know, this is where it is. Uh, and then towering models and aircraft are the exceptions to this so we see this new keyword towering so i'm assuming this is going to be like knights Titanic. things like that Titanic. Um, yeah yeah that you the trees are not going to obscure them because uh, i remember like back in the day in fourth edition where things had like models had and terrain had tiers right there was like tier one tier two through tier three tier yeah, four yeah, yeah. in terms yep. of height and that was sort of the abstract way of looking at it and then we yeah. just sort of gone with towering and not an aircraft and not those things yeah, like fourth, like old, older editions, the way they interact with terrain, we've we've kind of gone up, gone down with how much abstraction. Um, and I don't know, you know, maybe we'll do a historical forty k, you know, retrospective at some point. Uh, that could actually be interesting. We'll write we'll write that down. <laughs> but write that down. Um, write that down. Yeah, let's 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 take a note of that. Yeah. Uh, so so first line of this is. Models, bro. I don't. I wasn't serious. You don't have to actually write that down. Yeah. All right. I'm so doing it. he's putting it in the show notes right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> so models and so visibility models and units that are holding within this terrain feature are never considered to be fully visible. So once again, here's the fully visible thing. Right. Similarly, if a model that is not wholly within this terrain feature must look through or over it in order to draw a line of sight on our model, then that model is never considered to be fully visible. Right. And so therefore, we'll have the benefit of cover. Right, so if you're shooting through trees, they get benefit of cover on the other side. This is a little different, simplified than ninth edition, where it was dense cover versus light cover versus heavy cover. Yeah, I don't think I ever actually used heavy cover like once in ninth edition. People forget. Anyway. People forget that it's there. That's yeah. that was the problem, uh, which is interesting in the article because they talk about there being a lot of different train cover traits and how they tried to make it more minimalistic. Which is fair because a lot of people just forgot that like things. But had nobody ever ground. used them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Okay. So. Yeah. I'm um, excited about this next part, Heath. The transports. This is amazing. So, in one of the articles, we have is, been we have been preaching this from day one on the show. Yeah. Was this this, ta this tactic we're about to talk about? Go ahead. <laughs> all right. So all transports are now going to have move and spit stuff out. But they they can shoot but not charge as long as the vehicle didn't advance or fall back. So everybody gets everything is an impulser. Everything yeah, is an impulser. Everything. So so yep. rhinos are once again the most powerful vehicle in 40k, right? Um, oh, it gets and, better. Oh, it gets yeah. better, Heath. Just keep that thought in your head. It gets better. So firing decks are back, so you can pop out the top mm -hmm. of the rhino and shoot. So put those multi melt those combi meltas and multi meltas in your rhino and pop and out plasma the top. guns. Yeah. They showed something yep. with orcs that said that basically you could put all your tank busters in a battle wagon and basically have them all shoot. And then whatever buff you give to the vehicle, 
buffs Goes the guy the models shooting out of shooting, it. Yeah. So you can and and the orc mechanic gives them plus one to hit. So you're gonna have all these orc tank busters shooting at plus one to their ballistic skill out of the battle wagon. So get ready for that madness. Uh, it'll be intense. Uh, some vehicles are going to have what's called rapid deployment, which is they can advance and stuff can still come out of the tank per normal disembark rules. And they listed the impulsor as one of the things that will have this rule. And the tar so we'll be able to the advance one, so yeah. our impulsors, pop everybody out and still shoot. So that being be said, cool. I would be willing to bet that impulsor has a very high firing deck number. I'd be oh, willing yeah. to bet oh, it's yeah, firing it's deck five or six. Yes, yeah, it's, it's basically open topped. So um, yeah, I'd be curious to see how some of the other, like like the Drakari models, treat this. Because uh, if so, okay. Other big thing here is y'all need to get a land raider if you already have one because land raiders have an assault ramp. Yes, they which do. means you can charge after you move and get out of it. Yep. Yo. So I'm not going to cry again, about losing inner circle anymore <laughs> or changing inner circle when I can do this. <laughs> yeah, I can. I can pop the you know a bunch of terminators or like four centurions running out of a land raider. Um, a repulsor or, has a transport capacity of twelve. Um, yeah, Keith, you can Ooh. put some aggressors in that land raider because. Uh, oh, yeah, it says yeah, here, with minus a couple mm -hmm. of exceptions, Space Marine transports no longer care whether Primaris unit is running in the back or not. That's spicy. Yeah, aggressors charge. Aggressors charging. So basically, I'm so, not yeah. allowed to put Hell Blasters in my scout speeders. That's basically what that's telling me. Like, don't think just because. Because <laughs> imagine <laughs> having be that cool. super nice. fast yeah. thing with That'd my nice. Hell Blasters in the back shooting out. Uh, oh my god! They're like, no, 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 no. Only scouts still going here, and and it also sounds Wait, like you you know, potentially the rhino, the rhinos. But you can put. In your repulsor, it shows, shows specifically with the impulsor, you can put, or the repulsor, sorry, 12 Adeptus of Sartes infantry models. They can have jump packs, they can be Wolfen, they can have Gravis, they can be Terminators, and they can yep. be Centurions. So you can put a Centurion squad in a, in a repulsor now, which is pretty cool. So four Centurions in a repulsor, move that thing up, and they're going to be able to get out, shoot, and charge. That's still really good because repulsors are going to be durable. So, uh, and sort of give us some examples, some other rules like the Falcon fire support, where, like the yeah. vehicle shooting when you get out means that the, uh, if you transport uh, until the end of the turn, each time a friendly model this embark from this transport makes an attack that targets the enemy unit that the uh, Falcon shot at, you can reroll the wounds. That's really Notice good. Notice it says um, attack. Yeah doesn't say shoot it says attack and then the way the rule the way they explain Ooh, it in the well article, spotted sir Ooh, it, it, well nice. it's in the article it says it points out that it's like it could be shooting or it could be a whirlwind of blades so it it is both a shooting and a melee bonus okay all and right if you think about how many guns a repulsor has i would yeah yeah day, day right. one look for this rule <laughs> on your repulsor day one yeah yeah <laughs> All right. All right. Um, we phases. saw how battle shock works. Uh, there I, I are mean, only phases, five yeah. phases. Only yeah. five Psychic phases. phase is back to third edition and fifth edition, where the psychic check happens in whatever phase it's relevant for. Um, yep. Which, which I'm okay with. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I mean, the the importance of like the phases was for like wound gates and stuff like that, but. Um, yeah, your morale phase now basically happens in the oh, command phase. Oh, yeah, that's going to make all those things. Yeah. If that doesn't change, that's going to make those things really durable. Yeah, I don't think it – I think it will. Like, the the wound gating is just a lot of math and admin, I think. I don't know if we're going to keep yeah. that. Remains to be seen. Uh, I am really interested in the way Battleshock works. Um, oh, yeah. So Battleshock is – if a unit, so uh, you may take a battle sh shock test for each of your unit on the battlefield that is below half strength. To do so, roll two di two dice, and if the result is greater than or equal to the best leadership, then you pass. Otherwise, the test has failed. So, and you're battle shocked. So, if you're battle shocked, then your OC characteristic drops to zero. Uh, if you fall back, you must take an escape test for a model unit, and you cannot use stratagems on that unit. So, this really does make an actual difference and makes the consequences of failing morale pretty bad. <laughs> yep. So you can't hold objectives, right? And you're not responsive to orders because you are really concerned about what just happened to you and your buddies. Um, so this is a good change. And so one of the 
more complicated things about previous editions, like seventh edition previously in 40k, was when you failed a te- uh, basically a morale check, you had to fall back, right? And that was like you had to physically move the models in a you know a number of dis- yep. dice distance towards your battlefield edge, and you could set up traps and. And like it was just a really clunky mechanic that required a lot of rules to explain and gotten a lot of, you know, like, well, this guy is blocking the fallback and therefore that unit is just destroyed, right? So like Yeah, a lot of um, feel bads. That's that's what a lot happens. of yeah, because like if I put one model here, I'm like, hey, if I could just run around, I'm like, no, that's not what it says. The rule book picture shows the line being drawn this way, and I'm impeding your base, you know, my base is in your fallback path of one millimeter, therefore your unit is destroyed. Like, ah. So this is an interesting yeah. balance between the relatively low consequence i lose a couple models from unit and the clunky need to explain how fallback moves work and regroup tests work so i kind of like it um and a key here it's it was in the article it's not explained in the little graphic is that it's also for single models that have less than half their starting ones so if you're true tank, which also means vehicles and characters yeah, yeah. so and your vehicle blah 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 yeah can suffer critical damage and need to and vehicles we looked at some of those data sheets vehicles don't have a great leadership check <laughs> so if you do a crap ton of damage then your vehicle will all of a sudden not be able to control an objective right and well and it could be pretty critical we're for knights on. for yeah. imperial knights right if they have the big yeah. oc value you you, you yeah. get them down to half strength and all of a sudden they fail a check and yeah that will they're be... in trouble yeah yep all right and then something else we had was uh they showed us the new uh Librarian and Terminator armor data sheet to give us an idea of how psychic powers worked. They also so, showed us this new model, and that model is yep. beautiful. It's yep, from the video. The one yeah. from the video. So we got uh, movement five, toughness five. So Terminator, that's the line the regular Terminators we saw. Save two, five wounds, six up leadership, one uh, objective control. Uh, he's got Deep Strike, he's a leader, at Faction of the Moment. He's got his Psychic Hood, and he's got a Veil of Time. That's a Psychic ability. But it's not a so, spell. It used to be, but it's yeah, not anymore. So the Psychic Hood, when this model is leading unit, models in that unit have a 4-up Feel No Pain against Psychic Attacks. That's pretty good. Yeah, the Hood does it. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and the veil of, veil of Time means that weapons equipped by models in that unit have sustained hits 1, which means they get Exploding 6s. Um, also really good. So one of the things that we haven't really seen here is how deny works. Just no idea, no mention, right? And d- there's been some sort of deny mechanic in all editions of this game. Uh, and it doesn't seem to be a clear, because like, these are basically passive abilities. Uh, yeah. so I'm not sure how these are going to work. I really, I, I can't, I, I don't know if I could find a way to, unless you say, hey, I've got to deny, and like that means that things with Psychic just don't work within range of this model, or there's some dice off. I'm not sure. Because the, uh, well, the smite, I mean, think- so you have a, a, a small smite and a big smite, which you can choose yeah. whether to do, and they're shooting attacks, but they have the Psychic keyword. right? But the big smite doesn't do mortal wounds, or so smite doesn't do mortal wounds unless you choose the big smite, and you roll a six to wound, which because it has the devastating wounds roll. So. Yeah. Well, and I would also say, like, what does a psychic hood do now? Is if you're within 12 inches of the of the power being cast, you get plus one to the deny roll. And this is just saying, no, it's now feel no pain against psychic attacks. And then you go yeah. look at smite, and it's a psychic witch fire attack that yeah. has ballistic skill. It's d6 dies, 24 inch range, strength five, might make one d3 damage. And then the other one, right? Then it has a bigger profile where it goes to strength six, neg two, d3. Still D6 shots, still ballistic skill three. It does have hazardous, which which they've already kind of mentioned is basically it sounds like it's going to be ones do bad stuff like plasma. Yeah, Ma- uh, so makes me so it could, makes it me could, wonder what watchers are going to do. I don't know. Hmm. I mean, and maybe I mean, I, psychic could could be the way, and and uh, and it would be interesting if that's just what psychic defense becomes is. You just have feel no pains against whatever, you know, if it's a keyworded thing. Or, like you said, just certain things can't be targeted, uh, which that exists in the game because Cluxus Assassins have always had that rule, regardless of whatever edition I've ever played with them. They just can't but target like, them with psychic powers. But, like, that also means, you know, other stuff. I don't know, because, like, you know, um, psychic powers that are, are, like, you know, battlefield control, like movement stuff. I don't know. We don't know how yeah. they're going to be implemented. And those have always been the most important things. Like, okay, whatever. A smite. Yeah. One smite. Okay, sure. Right. But like, no, you don't get to move again. <laughs> like, oh no, you don't get to get this, you know, invul deny spell off. Right. So, so 
uh, there's a lot that remains to be seen about how exactly this is going to work. So, yeah. Yeah. So, but it's exciting. Right. I think it, it's it's definitely going to change. They're changing the game in a way we've never seen it, and it's going right. to for sure make the game more exciting to try out. Like that's, that's it. like we're gonna have to we're gonna have to scheme. That's one thing. So, like, listen to the Long War. Kenny Boucher always talks about like we get to scheme. It's like so much of this game is actually spent of us just doing what we're doing right here, sitting around, like what we're getting ready to do, talking about the lion list with the lion in it. We're just sitting just here thinking problems. about how to play. Just yeah. solving problems. Right. Well, I've uh, I recently uh, had you know taught somebody how to play D and D, and like over the course of the last eight months, she's really become. She's like, look, the thing I like about this game is solving the problems. Right, innovative, yeah. creative ways to do things. I'm like, yeah, I got you hooked. That's the way this works. So, yeah, that's what we're about to do. We've yeah, already so sol- we've solved the ninth edition codexes and the ninth edition rule set. So let's get a new set of problems. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of that, so the big problem that we keep seeing. Um, people keep talking about is the fact that, and I've seen the videos from like Auspex Tactics and things, is the Lion is not competitive. That seems to be sort of a community consensus that I keep reading. Maybe I'm reading the wrong Facebook posts and seeing the wrong videos pop up. But people seem to think that he's going to just get squished on by things that are equivalent in points and in value and in damage output. So Heath and I, we both come up with some lists with the with the lion in them, and sort of how we think he's going to work out. Uh, not saying this is for me. I'm not going to say that this is competitive, but I mean, I, I'm not going to not play with him. Mm-hmm. I mean, let me go through my collection of Dark Angels books over on the floor here and just start reading to you how many decades of lore there is. Of oh, the lion's just sitting there. Oh, the lion's just sitting there. The lion's just sitting there waiting to come back. You know, I'm not going to not play with him. Like he's coming. Yeah. I'm going to get him, get my hands on him. Eventually, he's going to get built. And he's going to get played with. Uh, hopefully, before 10th edition comes out, and you know, with they're redoing everything with 10th edition, uh, maybe he'll come back out and he'll be more competitive yeah. in 10th potentially. Uh, but I'm still going to try and get him out because I still think that. And just I went back and looked at his profile, right? That they can get off the website for free, where he's got. His or the book Deep Strike with re rolls. He's got fight first. He's got re roll ones and hits and wound rolls of one for Dark Angel's core and character. He can deny two psych up to two psychic powers a turn. He's got four pinball and he pings back mortals and he can make something than nine inches of him heroically intervene. That's just a Dark Angel's unit. So you can give your Leviathan Dreadnought heroic intervention up to six inches or squad of terminators or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the Judiciar with the fight last mechanic. Uh, it's, it, there's there's some play, but maybe I feel like people were expecting him to come out and be what Gilliman was right out the gate, where it was re-roll everything all the time for Ultramarines, and you were just going to surround him with Hell Blasters and Eradicators and just walk all over yeah. the place and slam people. And that's, you know, he was going to give you a bunch of command points that you could then spend on whatever and it's like he just doesn't do that like that's not his thing and i think people were very disappointed because we all remember eighth edition seventh and eighth edition when gilliman was first out and gilliman could get back up and gilliman could do this and gilliman did everything and he can still do all those things yeah i we've i think we've we've talked about this you know at length over the last couple episodes and and we're not going to change it right it is going to change in a few months right but um you know, like Battle Scribe just updated yesterday with the Lion. So let's put him in there let's and let's let's, let's see what we think. So um, I put a list together real quick, right? And once again, this is not finely tuned, right? I have a couple of ideas how to potentially change it. Uh, but I'll go ahead and go over it real quick. So uh, obviously it's an Arcs of Omen detachment. Here's what I'm thinking. So I've got Azrael and two Talon Masters. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of the Talon Masters has Arbiter's Gaze, and one of them has Rites of War. This is a squad of five Infiltrators with a Helix Gauntlet. Uh, and then, so that's kind of like, that's what I'm just, in general, kind of always show up with. <laughs> uh, so then, here's where uh, I've got some interesting stuff. So I've got uh, five Hell Blasters, five Eradicators, uh, a Desolation Squad with the usual trimmings, right? So Super Crack and the Vengor Launcher. Three Inceptors with Plasma, five Blade Guard Vets, and a Judiciar. The Judiciar has Honor of the First Legion, 
uh, and a master crafted executioner relic blade, which you can do. Right, the relic blade oh, nice. is plus three, minus three, two damage, and you can master craft it because the master craft uh, relic says you can't do this to anything that already says master crafted which the Executioner Relic Blade does not say. So now oh, it's a cool. three damage Executioner Relic Blade. Nice. And then I gave him the Warlord trait, Honor the First Legion. So he has a six inch heroic intervention, right? And he can throw the fight last mechanic out, right? So, and then I've got an Impulsor and the Lion. So kind of what I'm thinking here is two bubbles, right? You've got one bubble around Azrael, right? And it's going to be the Hellblasters and the Eradicators. And then one of the talent masters, right? And the other talent, and the and the desolation marines, and the uh, and the talent master is going to sit kind of probably behind that, or the other talent master is going to be off maybe doing something else. Uh, and then, if you need to, you can keep the lion off the board and the inceptors off the board, right? And then when you drop in, right? So now I've got you know a little death ball with Azrael, and then I've got my two talent masters, which just shoot over next to the lion. Right, and then my impulsor shoots over next to lion, jumps out the judiciar, jumps out the um, the blade guard, right, and the inceptors drop in. So I've got two squads, right, and one of which, and both of which I can transhume if I need to, right. That will be able to character block for him, and I've got the two talon masters, and when his reroll hits and wounds thing, that's a lot of shooting down range. Right, and if yeah. you get in close to him, then that judiciar will just jump, and he'll pull somebody. You know, over in the way, the Jishar will jump in, throw fight last. That's kind of the idea. Um, and then, you know, maybe the lion, like, I don't know if I want to try and make a nine inch punt with the lion on the turn of drop in because that'll move him past the range of all of his buffs or all of his defenses. Uh, it depends on what you're going into. But that's kind of what I'm thinking uh, in my terms of my just general, eh, right? So, two little, so. Azrael being able to throw all these rerolls, uh, and then the Talon Masters being able to throw all their, you know, get rerolls on all their stuff, right? And the Inceptors. That's a lot of shooting. Yeah, that's a lot of shooting. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's an interesting concept. Uh, it's probably going to struggle on you know hold two, hold three, or or maybe not. Um, the the Desolations can sit on your backfield, right? Objective and just shoot. Uh, the infiltrators will grab a front field objective, and then <clears throat> Azrael's death ball and the lion's death ball. There's two independent things that you can move around, and they can support each other. They can not support each other. You can move one of those talent masters back to give the lion's group, or sorry, uh, Azrael's group reroll ones to wound uh, if you don't need. Uh, and then maybe Azrael can throw a reroll hit on him, right? So he gets yeah. So so he doesn't lose efficacy from not being able to reroll ones to hit himself. Um, so I don't know that's kind of the general concept I'm working with right now. What do you think? Okay, and I'll, I'll tell you some of the other potential changes I would I would maybe make. All right. Well, uh, I'm still trying to stick to the commitment I made sort of at the beginning of the year that I was going to have like a rough skeleton that I was going to play with and then swap things in and out of as I went along. And so basically taking the list that I've just played with Rich, my buddy Rich, that's similar to the kind of stuff I had at Adepticon. Uh, we're gonna. I only have the, the singular bubble, although I'm not opposed to trying to build out a second one where you have the Azrael, Primaris Azrael, and then the Primaris Chaplain on bike that I've been running. Uh, outside Force Org chart on the Arcs of Omen Detachment, I'm gonna have the Ravenwing Apothecary, the Chief Apothecary with the Selfless Healer. Br bring that bubble back, have the same mm -hmm. three troop choices. Incursor, the Infiltrator, the Assault and Intercessor Squad. Now that I have my Soul Forge box, I can actually kit bash in with the Thunder Hammer, Thunder Hammer and the Storm, uh, the Terminator box to make the Intercessor Sergeant with the Thunder Hammer. So I actually have one, so I'll feel comfortable yeah. playing with it. Um, I need to finish up my Blade Guard Ancient that's been sitting on my desk since uh, Indominus came out. <laughs> I've got uh, one too, on. yeah. Um, but I yeah. make him the Chapter Ancient. Actually, I have two of those in here. Ooh, actually, I actually have more points than I thought I did. All right, hold on. So I got like 90 more points in this list than I thought I did. Nice. Uh, five uh, Black Knights. Then I got the two Thunder Strikes. The five-man Eradicator Squad with a five-man Aggressor Squad. and the, Which, think about this. A five-man Aggressor Squad is only 150 points. Oh, you're right. That's really good. And there's That's really cheap, six yeah. shots. Six shots per guy plus a D6 shots. Times five. 
you're just going to murder yeah. those thirty man the problem is the range, I've seen at Decepticon. The range though, man, it's only eighteen inch range. It's so short. But, you can like, but they're assault weapons, so you can still advance them. I might have to find a. Oh, I do have decisive tactician in on the chaplain at the moment. If this is the same one, oh, but I can't because he has to be the warlord. All right, so I'm gonna have to drop probably drop wise. Oh, do I want? Somehow I'm gonna have to figure out how to get the decisive tactician. I might have to hero the chapter, the the ancient to give them the plus one to the advance roll, so they at least minimum advance two, and then they can still shoot. Uh, and then you give them full rerolls from Azrael, so they kind of ignore the minus one anyway. So, if you're thinking your selfless healer and wise order, that's already your two heroes of the chapter. You can't get a third. And Paragon We're gonna have to do, has we'll to have go to do some on, thinking yeah. on this one. Yeah, Paragon has to go on on your warlords, right? So you can only yep. get and two you, extra and warlords. And the lion choice. has to be the warlord because and the lion has to be the warlord. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, we'll um, have to do some rearranging, but I, I still like, having played with just those three aggressors, I definitely want to try out running five of them. And uh, I think if you're running the apothecary, you know, they're going to need an apothecary and Ezreal to help keep them alive and get the extra movements and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then I had a Desolation Squad in here, but I dropped it, to and the Inceptors dropped to try and get lion in here then i just bumped up the eradicator squad a little bit mm -hmm. uh, but i might bump it back down now that i realized i had two blade ancient or blade guard ancients in here i think you're gonna have issues but, with range because yeah because you're gonna have like yeah um yeah and pushing the uh pushing out the 24 inch range and there's a lot of stuff that'll just sit back and outrange you right yeah. um Tau, Tau would be in it, yeah. Like Tau would do that. Um, yeah, Tau can, yeah. So, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, but, um, I mean, there's there isn't a lot with Deep Strike, which I hate going into games without. Now I look at it, there's I don't have any Deep Strike, which I hate going into games without Deep Strike. I feel like going into a space, as a space marine player, going into a game without Deep Strike is like going in out your door without your pants on, right? Like, okay. it's not good. So, so your your vision for this is to run Azrael and the Lion next to each other, like in one ball? Essentially, that's what it would end up being in a way, because uh, I don't... The way the, based on what people have been saying, where they've been running, crunching the numbers and doing the points per value and all that stuff, they're saying he isn't going to be this, like, crazy... I'm gonna... He's not gonna go out and... and the, like, the, the math is there, but the, the, the odds, and based on how my eye roll dies, the odds of him just going out and one-shotting knights and one-shotting this, that, or the other aren't there. So for me, he's going to be more of a deterrent piece of like, if you want to come deal with this death ball, you're going to have to bring something big because if you don't, the line is just going to pick up whatever small thing you send over here to try and slow me down or try. Essentially, my idea of him is, as I keep working on lists, is that there's going to be some sort of shooting thing around Ezreal. Like I'm going to have hell blasters or desolation desolators or eradicators standing next to Ezreal. And then the lion's job is to stand there and go, if you come over here and try and fight this in melee to turn off the shooting, I'm going to kill you. And that's sort of basically going to be the, the plan with him in my head right now. Mm. I still think that you're going to need two, two centers of effort um, okay. to be able to, to be able to like push multiple objectives, like minimum two objectives. So, uh, and, and I just think you get a lot of overlap between Azrael and the lion. Um, that's true. And, uh, the one time I tried to play with the new Azrael, he died in a vehicle explosion. So I haven't had a chance to see how yeah. much of a close combat to turn. Cause he did get all these buffs and I haven't had a chance to try him out yet. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's good. I, I've, I've had it a, had a couple times, but like, I just think that in terms of what Azrael does and then what the lion does, you're gonna like, they're, 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 they're kind of trying to do the same job almost. Okay. Um, and the lion, the lion being able to move eight inches, right? And char and so maybe, um, so like what I was thinking was, you know, putting a blade guard in front of him, right? Because I can move and jump yeah. the blade guard out, right? And so that way I can, you know, create another, I can drop the lion in, drop the inceptors in, move the talon masters, drop, you know, blade, move over with the inceptor, put the blade guard out. Um, and that way I can like create another bubble. I was thinking, Maybe instead of Blade Guard, like a Deathwing Command Squad with with Storm Shields, yeah. 
right? So that way they look out sure all those characters if there's only one model. Um, but like that was, I like the uh, yeah go so well, I was gonna say when I first built the list or I first started build, building with the lion the idea was two command squads three man command squads and the lion and then I was like all right two, that way I have squads oh interesting oh that's so that way like idea. you yeah I like that so huh. that way you have some redundancy okay uh, and it's not exp- I mean it's 105 points to basically give you three guys that they have to kill before they can get to, you know, cause I have like a clump of characters. It's like, okay, we'll put these three terminators here, put these three over here. Now you got to kill six terminators to, before you can even touch my people. And they've, of course they've got thunder hammers and storm shields because why not? Cause yeah. Cause why wouldn't they? Yeah. It's a, so I like the idea of two, three, like, so two squads, that way you're just kind of breaking up the math efficiency of, yeah. you know, and you're, cause you're going to have to kill all that down to a single, Basically, you know, as long as they're positioned so that they can uh, screen for maybe they'll maybe they'll be able to shoot one of the one of the talent masters. I don't know. Um, yeah. So that is, so would you, hmm? Okay. And then I guess you could still put uh, a missile launcher on at least one of them in that squad, right? I think you have five. to have five in a command okay. squad to get a missile launcher. So that's fair. So if you're going to do that, I don't think you would. And I think that the two three man squads is a good point efficiency break. Yeah. For because like because they're there to protect the characters. Right. Right. Um, and so the you don't need the missile. It'd be nice if you could get the missile launcher, but bumping them up to five, I think maybe too much point investment because they're, they're 35 points a model. It's, it's like, yeah. So now you're talking basically 350 plus like basically 450 points for five plus three um just to get the missile i don't know um so the question is like do you need another support character in there to get a fight last next to the line i really think having right. a fight last next to the line is important that's why i'm trying to get the the, the judiciar and the only yeah. way i get the judiciar over there is with the impulsor so like fuck I might as well have blade guard and like i like the idea of the blade guard from the book um because he's got five uh we don't call them fallen anymore we call them risen redeemed uh redeemed Ooh, dark angels okay. uh and i was and th- that form basically his 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 retinue uh and it names them in the arcs the omen lion book uh and it's a cool story i really recommend gra- if y'all haven't right. get a chance grab it on kindle uh read the book uh it's good right it's it's good it's not dan abnett writing Right, so it's not going to like you know fill you with you know the martial urge to go throw your life away for the emperor, <laughs> but it's well written and it's compelling. Anyway, so I'm getting off on a tangent, but anyway, so there's a there's characters in the book, right, which are you know dark angels that have been cast throughout space and time that the lion finds and then personally redeems, right, which become his you know some of his closest companions, and I can see. You know, when they become integrated with the dark, you know, with the main chapter, you know, going through the Rubicon Primaris and becoming Blade Guard, right? And I just like the idea of that. Matter of fact, I'm actually yeah. working on painting them. <laughs> um, I've been working on them for a while, but it just came out that like this idea from the book translates so well into what I'm building in these models. But um, we're gonna we're gonna note that down for when we get to the yeah. challenge. We're gonna yeah. you have so, a long term project cooking in the background. We're gonna we're gonna remember mm-hmm. that. So yeah, um, I, I don't know. I I think you need fight last with the lion. Okay. I I I I see what everybody's saying, and yes, a four up invul save with no other defensive buffs is not a three up save with a stand back up. It's not a wound gate. It's not any of those things, and those things are all true. Um, but I think that once again, like you have to choose the time and the place where you put them in. Yep. And obviously, exactly. your opponent gets to say on that, uh, but. With the right support around him, I think the lion's going to do a lot of work, um, and so that's why what my list is trying to trying to do is like, look, I've got stuff next to him. I can put this fight last out, uh, and then I've got characters that can do a lot of shooting, right? And then maybe pull something like, and if you can pull, so I've got the judiciar with the honor of the first legion, so we can heroic intervene in, and then the lion can use his, uh, wa- you know, no one escapes the watchers to pull the uh, blade guard in right and you're going to need some practice about where to put them and this is all going to be moot in two months anyway so maybe you won't ever get there but um yeah, I, right. I really want to try it I, I think it's got some legs um 
I really like your idea about two three man Deathwing Command squads, <laughs> and I can't that, pay for them unless I drop those Blade Guard. I don't know. Maybe. Ooh, maybe. Maybe if I get rid of the Desolation Squad, I could do that. Let me try that. Well, that, what were you saying? Go ahead. They've been they've been sitting on my desk or in my notes for a while, having played some of these like bigger Deathwing mm-hmm. lists of like. Five man is good, but there's stuff that can pick them up. Ten man is good, but if a whole army dumps into them, you pick them all up. Yeah. And I was like, where's the sweet point where they're not super expensive, but there's enough of them there that they can go delete something I need deleted because three of them with Thunder Hammers is ten Thunder Hammer tra- char- attacks on the charge and ten Thunder Hammers into a light vehicle, yeah. a Dreadnought, a dedicated close combat unit like themselves. I mean, you could pick up another squad of five Terminators with that if you, if you roll really well. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like that's sort of like that three man Terminator squad is sort of a sweet spot of efficiency and danger that we really need. Plus with the added bonus of it stops your dudes from getting targeted. Right? I have so heard I you that, talking about it. it. That, that is true. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's try that. So, so a three man squad is 105 points. Yep. Okay. So let's duplicate that. Okay, so that puts me. So if I just drop the Desolation Squad, keep everything else the same, that puts me two thousand twenty-five because I was two thousand on the nose before. So what do I do to get twenty-five points back in this list? Uh, I've already got the. I could drop one of the Blade Guard, honestly. That, that would, would be do ten it. points under. That would put me ten points under, um, and that gives you something. So you can you can drop something in around him. Yeah. Um, I mean. Or honestly, maybe keeping the... I don't know. Nah, you need the range with the Eradicators. Um, so five Eradicators is still still probably required. Um, and, and to maintain okay. efficiency. You, want, you don't want them to... You want yeah. to still be able to kill something after they kill one or two of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so this is now... Azrael, Talonmaster, Talonmaster, Infiltrators, four Blade Guard... Three man Deathwing Command Squad, three man Deathwing Command Squad, Judiciar, three Inceptors with Plasma, five Eradicators, five Hellblasters, Impulsor, the Lion. So you've got some flexibility for, yeah. you know, you know, creating the bubbles and doing the shooting, and yeah. And, and I will point out that the three man is based on experience because I played a game with some two mans, and at the end of it, I oh, went, yeah, that's... that was so insane. And if I had just one more, I could have done so much more damage and been an even okay. bigger pain in the butt. So the next time I do this, I'm running three. So it's it's there. There is some actual gameplay experience behind the decision to run three, so, not just oh, I want three. You know, I like this because okay, so I'm giving up indirect fire, and against a lot of armies, the indirect fire just isn't really worth it. Correct. So I mean, like, look, I don't need indirect fire if my talent masters are like behind your lines and shooting your stuff. Um, yeah. So, and this gives you the option to move the blade guard to support the lion or move the blade guard to put in front of Azrael. Um, yep. Maybe I can drop the hell blasters, five hell blasters for five eradicators. Because that's exactly the same amount of points. Uh, let's see that. Let's see that. Let's see that. Aggressor squad. Boom. Uh, frag bolt storm because that's what I have. Yeah, that's uh, that's a bunch of toughness five. <laughs> um, yeah, around them, and you've got plasma in the inceptors. So I don't. I ran into that yeah. in my game where I had knights, inceptors, and hell blasters, and I'm like, I don't have enough command points or stratagems to give everything. Three damage, and so I guess yeah. it's one of those things you run into when you're building these Dark Angels lists. Is you have to have a, you have to come up with kind of with a plan because you can't you have, to have, have too much of yeah. one plan because then you find yourself hamstrung. Mm-hmm. Of oh, I need this in three spots at once, like Ezreal. You need Ezreal in three different spots at once, doing three different things, and he can't do them all uh, in one turn. And you're like, well, I guess I just lose now. So you got to have this concept in your head of like, this is what he does because if I try and do more than just this, it's going to cause problems. Okay. Um, I well, once I build the lion, um, which I don't know if I'm going to do this week. Are we? Are we magnetizing the head? Oh uh, yeah, God, dude, come on, let's go, <laughs> y'all. Let's go. Magnetize, give him the head. Um, 
Let's I don't know go. if I'm emo- I don't know if I'm emotionally ready to build a lion yet. I <laughs> I'm gonna have a very busy week at work, and the next week I'm gonna be really super busy, and so I need to. I don't know. Maybe next week I'll um I don't know. I'll, I'll take a day off or something and like burn some incense and you know listen to some chants uh, and some candles. get myself in the get myself in the headspace. Um, monk monk yeah. Gregorian chant. Yeah, uh, or just two put steps on from o- hell. They got some pretty epic music. They do. Hell. Yeah, ep- yeah. If you guys have never listened, like put on just just go to YouTube search for epic battle music and uh, or one called Two Steps from Hell. That sh- that that'll get you. I almost said a bad word. That'll get you fired up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that'll get you fired. It'll get you fired up. They use actually use a lot of 40k imagery on that site. They yep. really on that channel. They do. Um, so I would like to I like to put that on if like we're like you know I'll put my my game table out in my living room and like my buddy comes over and we drink scotch and okay well this is bourbon not scotch, uh, and and we'll just put that on as background music, and it's great. Um, okay, all right. I don't know. Hey, I think I think I've got an interesting. Uh, I think I've got an interesting option. No, I like here. it. Because that toughness five, that's a lot of that is thirty toughness five wounds around Azrael. Yeah, and it's pretty, t- it's pretty tasty. And, and you can always throw uh, feel no. You can always throw um, transhuman on the blade guard, or basically any of those stuff other than the Terminator Term- Term- command squads. So, yep. um, okay, hey, um, I don't know. That's, I, we'll see how it goes. If you, if anyone is listening, has their own ideas about the way to do it. Um, Listen, comments below. I mean, comments below. I'm, we are operating from the assumption that there is a use for it for the lion. Um, I've already looked ahead at some of these comments, and a lot of people think, you know, trash. Uh, hey, okay, I, I feel it. Figure out a way around it. Like, like, yep. You've been waiting twenty years for this model. Figure out a way to make it work. Right? There's something yep. there. Right? So. Just put it, put that you know theoretical and find out the practical to to use the ultramarines terminology. All right, let's All move right. on. Hobby challenge. All right. So Keith was like, "Are we recording that?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm just sitting here painting my desolation squad." So I got some over here. Uh, the key is, is I was going to do a bunch of magnet stuff with mine until I realized after I built them that you can just set. And if you're not, the idea of these things right is you put them in a corner, they don't move too much. You can mm-hmm. ju- the way the, they're built. You can actually just set the little missile pod things on top of the the top of the gun ch- chassis, basically, top of the stock, and they just sit there. They don't move. Yeah, use a little bit of a uh, blue tuck or something. That could probably work. Yeah, you don't you don't really have so. to. So that way, if you want to try out both versions, or like on the sergeant, I'm going to try a couple games where it's just all super crack or all super frag, and then try a game with the Vanguard launcher just to see how it, it plays out any particular way. Uh, but that's that's why I didn't want to glue, you know, commit and glue anything. Uh, but I got five of them that I started, I got them built, and I got them primed, and I started painting them this weekend. And then I got put on babysitting duty, and I was getting some time into them tonight, and then he's like, we're going. And I'm like, all right. So I got them built, all right. and they're halfway painted. Okay. I have uh, two squads of five. Uh, built and to a battle re- painted to a battle ready standard. There's a, I can probably detail the eyes and a couple and maybe do a little bit more highlighting. But you know, here is an example of one of them. Nice, right? And I've got the bases done over there. I just need to. Tr- I've so I've actually come to really like. I put all my guys. I paint them on temporary bases. Then I just blue tack them down. So it's way easier for me to paint and texture all the bases without the model on them. I have to be way less careful. Um, there is one minor conversion that I did, which I'm actually pretty oh, nice. happy with. So this guy, and I put a nice little cloak on him. Oh, good call. Good call. Yeah. And that cloak took some, I don't remember where it came from. It's a plastic cloak. It's got Dark Angel iconography on it. Uh, I don't remember what model it came from. It's been sitting on my desk for who knows how long. You can, it took some trimming. In- it took some trimming to get it on there, to get it to fit. There but, is yeah. a cloak in the Terminator box. I don't think this is that one because it's, it's got a little one. cutout that's meant to go around a uh, like a, a Mark IV or a Mark Seven ba- uh, power armor backpack, um, and okay. and but it, it it fits real well on the sergeant because it's flared out and it just gives enough room to get uh, to go over the missile pack. 
Um, you have to do a little bit of, I had a little bit of work with a Dremel and then more around the backpack to get it in there. But it, it worked out. It worked out pretty well. It's not golden. Okay, either, but nothing good. I do is come on guys. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I got, I got those. Um, I'm willing to claim them. So. All right. So, so we got, we're both good with like, we got, we got some guys done. Yep. I can't I'm, remember I'm if happy it was with just it. build or paint. Cause I was going to the assumption it was just I build, don't remember but I was going to try and, I was going to try and that's... stretch to paint, but I also thought I had another I'm... week. So yeah, <laughs> that's fair. I'm good with it since we're going early and you're ready. All right. So we're going to go back to the part where we said you have, you have a uh, lion guard basically sitting off to the right that you've been slow cooking. Yep. Uh, so I need to finish these desolators. Uh, I've got two dreadnoughts back over here that need done. I got a brutalis to build back on the bed behind me here because mm -hmm. this is my office slash guest bedroom. Uh, you've got line. I think we're getting to the point of like, what's let's let's have a cleanup month. We have a couple of these a year, uh, just to try yeah. and help keep us honest and finish up old projects, which is one of the main reasons behind the hobby challenge to begin with. So let's let's have a month of like, let's just get some stuff cleaned up and see how much we can get cleaned up out of the office uh, on either either part of the country here and we'll just do that for the next month sounds good stretch goal for the lion <laughs> this is yeah stretch goal my stretch goal is that brutalis because he is still okay. on sprue but man i mine, mine is too but yeah i'm gonna get one in there a I lion need, and I, dreadnought list would be amazing that's the lion's guard y'all it's four dreadnoughts <laughs> so <laughs> yeah and i'm i'm gonna get my i think i'm probably gonna order some special you know, Dark Angel stuff for another Redemptor oh, chassis yeah. and put it on the Brutalis. So I'll have like three Redemptors with fancy, like two Redemptors and a Brutalis. And that'll be the Lion's Guard. Oh, Because <laughs> they all move eight inches. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I can get that done. I can get, I'm motivated now. I've read the book. I've, I've got, you know, you know, I'm, I'm aligned. Nice. I can, I can see it. It's going to be cool. So. All right, let's do it. Oh, all right. So go into the all community right. comments. Um, good old Alan is, is here in the comments. We've got a couple Alan comments. Uh, let's start with the smallest one first. Uh, looking at all the Adepticon terrain, it's so open. It's like Planet Bowling Ball. I can see why shooting was king. This has been a complaint about Adepticon for years. Uh, yeah. That, but yeah. it is due to the fact that it is a player place terrain event, and they have... You have to keep them more. Each piece of terrain has to be more than four and a half inches away from the table edge and from another piece of terrain. And they make big pieces of and they give you big pieces of terrain. So basically, like you're placing three to four pieces of terrain in the game, and you have two hour, forty five minute rounds in which mm. you are placing terrain, going over your list, deploying, and then playing a yeah. five round, a five turn game. So it's a very quick. Let's just get it on the board and go, uh, and. But it's, it's the thing to keep in mind that, like, again, this is one of the things I think is an undervalued part of tournament play is, and this is where, like, in previous editions where we didn't have the dedicated tournament pack that made a lot of these bigger turn uh, events interesting, where you had to build to different events. Like Adepticon, you had to build to the terrain and their unique mission packet. And Nova had a unique mission packet. And, 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 a, Atlanta and a unique had a mission unique structure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nova's mission structure was crazy. Yeah, and then so, ITC was separate from all of them. Like, there, these events yeah. counted for ITC, but the ITC mission packet was separate from everybody yeah. else's stuff. And so if you're going to Adepticon, just, you know, be prepared that it's... The terrain might be a little sparse depending on what you're looking at, and you need to build and plan accordingly, offensively and defensively. Well, See, we got like eleven also... months till Adepticon, but yeah. So next, yep, there you and go. It'll be tenth edition, so we who knows what's all going to look like then. Exactly. Uh, so Alan also talked about the inner circle has a bullet point. You can add a power fist, nothing to replace. You just add it. Uh, oh, the in I see is not inner circle; it's interrogator chaplain. Mine now yep. runs a Croesus, combi melta, and a power fist. Nasty Lord, does he hold the Crozius in a power fist? That would I'm be not sure. extra boink. That'd be pretty dope. That'd be pretty melted. That'd be pretty. That's pretty metal. All right. Or he has a big. Um, the combi melt that fits in the power fist. That's how he can hold such a big weapon because he's got it in his power yeah, fist. Yeah, it's, a, it's cool. an integral. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, um, thanks for uh, another great episode. My prediction is the data slate will be out on April 13th. And if they got any sense, it'll have something to do with the Doctrines Codex Warfare, but we'll see. 
This yep, guy just knows happens. everything. Uh, he, if they yeah. just nerf Terminators, <laughs> then Iron Hands will just rule, right? So you can't well, just get rid of Inner Circle. you got to mess with Codex Warfare. Uh, roll on 10th. Uh, I'm very excited about everything I've seen so far. Simple but not simplistic. Easy to understand. Easy to explain your army to your opponent. Nothing so far I've not liked. They even let me keep my existing Terminator models, assuming that we get definitely Terminator data sheet, which yep. I hope that they will. And then his, see, his final comment here is I'm generally love your optimism, but bear in mind 10 Deathwing Terminators is not 330 points if you need an Ancient to support them. What happens when that Ancient has nothing left to buff? I'm not Let me sure jump in there on just... that. So, yeah. so yeah, I agree. The full package is 430 points because you need an Ancient. But, you know, when they're all dead, the Ancient can buff himself, right? Because the Ancient yeah. with Thunder Hammer Storm Shield hits pretty hard. He moves on, he moves six inches, and he can just throw the uh, throw both those buffs on himself. And that's still a pretty, pretty, yeah. you know, sat little character for, for 100 points. So, um, and he could throw that buff on Asriel, right? Uh, there's a lot of things that you could still do with that. So, I, I don't. I don't necessarily completely agree with this comment that once the Terminators are dead, the Ancient is useless. Um, I, I don't you, think that's true. Uh, can you dump the banner on the Lion? No. Because uh, I'm pretty sure it says Infantry. Okay. The Pen of Remembrance? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, that would I think be, you're right. I, that think, would it, be, I think it's Inner Circle Infantry. Because I think it also has to be Deathwing. It, has to have the, it's, it doesn't trigger off the Inner Circle keyword. It triggers off the Deathwing okay. keyword. Okay. I'm pretty Sorry. certain. I'll look that up while you're finishing reading this comment. But right, and then because and so he goes on to say it's just level I play, but my opponents don't have much issue picking up ten fully buffed terminators, and this is the problem. Even with inner circle, there are armies that can yeah. pick up ten terminators in one turn. It's the fact that when you bring forty of them, they that's where people tend to struggle. Um, and without inner yeah, circle, the, the game is just too lethal much at this point. The okay. game is just too lethal at this point. Yeah, and then I think so any I think successful we... Darkwing list will dump them entirely. Maybe take up some Blade Guard, do otherwise Ravenwing, Greenwing things as well. Time to see if I'm right, but I guarantee the top meta chasers will drop them like a stone. Which means those of us that are loyal, we will be able to pick up so many minis so cheaply on eBay. Uh, and remember, our Terminator is going to T5, and AP is going down mm -hmm. in tenth. So just because they're no longer super meta right now doesn't mean they're not going to be meta in the new edition. So get those yeah. terminators now while they're while they're easy to acquire. Uh, so the Pen of Rose... Remembrance, the Pen of Remembrance definitely says Deathwing Infantry Core, right? And Steadfast okay. Example says uh, Chapter Core, and the uh, Astartes chapter, the Astartes banner is Chapter Core, and the Chapter banner is Chapter Core. So none of that's going to work on the line. Very sad. Fighting on Death Lion. Let's go. I mean, I mean, it makes it, it makes sense. Point, but... It it makes sense because like he's lying. He doesn't need anybody else to give him a. Go he, he doesn't need a picture of himself <laughs> on a flag to inspire himself <laughs> to be more awesome. <laughs> Get out of here. Ch you fair know enough. What I'm well said, sir. Well said. So uh, Eric Rose says, "Employee of the, the month." Line. Thank you. Right there. <laughs> exactly. Oh <laughs> uh, man. Uh, and then Phoenix Gaming says, I'm a big fan of Community Backlash over this character. New model isn't inherently broken. Trash, boycott GW, and then things are broken. Why is it broken? Trash, boycott GW. Personally, I think his damage output is a little silly, but I love that as of right now, it doesn't seem like just an inherently busted new model, and the sculpt is amazing. And the Phoenix Gaming is, of course, my boy Chris, who just hates anything Space Marines. So the fact that he's actually <laughs> going to come out and compliment the Lion is his It is an objectively him. beautiful model, for real. Yeah. No one, uh, and, I, 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 yeah. Well, and it's then great. with the community backlash and things like this, he and I've been, this is why, one of the reasons why he and I do the podcast. We've both been around forever uh, at this point in the hobby for us, especially for a lot of people. Like if you just started playing in ninth and you're getting ready to go to 10th edition, this is your first edition change. Uh, get ready. You will, you will not die. Like it'll be, you'll have, you'll, ha you will have fun fine. eventually. It, it, you know, you'll probably have fun pretty quickly. Because uh, I remember when we went from 8th to ninth, and a lot of people in my group, they'd only ever played 8th, and when we went to ninth. they were like, well, I don't know about this, I don't know if I like this, and it's like, don't worry, so, this, this is this is natural, it'll be okay. My my brother-in-law was that way, he started playing in 8th edition, and you know, in 9th edition, they were like, slow dripping the stuff, and he was just like, and he was a competitive player, he went full in, because he's yeah. in Texas, and like, in the t Team Texas circuit, like, they're, oh, and he yeah. was just like, oh, this is like, bro, call, it's... Just, also, it was like it was like smack in the middle of COVID, and it was uh, oh yeah, yeah. There was just there was no way to we didn't know anything and and what was gonna how was it gonna affect it. So yeah, um, 
they'll keep us on a slow drip, right? To build hype, right? The marketing team is better at building hype than the than the merchandising team is at like at stocking enough models. Uh, so, yeah, the like it, it's it's once we get, you you can't evaluate a complex system like this until you see the entire picture, right? So yeah, you know, make individual comments and you know, revisit them once you have the entire picture. So. Right. Well, and and I mean, we live in an outrage culture society right now, anyway. In the we don't even need. Span. We don't even need to get into that. Yeah. Right. There's um, but, but, but we can make a the, whole other podcast about yeah. about yeah. But but this, so. but again, this is one of the reasons we're here is to be like, look, let's have a level head. We all want. We're all going to buy the line. Let's just admit it. No matter what the rules were, we were all going to buy them anyway, and we just were all going to put on the prices. table at least once. So just not for let's just go prices. ahead don't and do, do it. Yeah, right. Yep. Like, don't, 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 not go get him because you think he's, you know, someone on the internet said his rules are trash and you can't win a tournament with him. I'm not buying him to win a tournament mm. with him. I'm buying him because it's the lion and I because want, it's my boy. I want yeah, it. That's, that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a cool model. It's a great story. Um, if you haven't read that book, like, tr- get get the book on I'm Kindle. Going to, I mean, it's on my like list. That. It's on the list. Um, it's it's really good, right? It, it's a, it is a, it's it's. So the author writes the lion in an empathetic way, right? He's, you know, he's okay. struggling, right? And it reminds me a lot of what how they wrote Gilliman when he first came back to 40k. There's a lot of a lot of, you know, what's the right word? Like I don't say like like fish out of water, like just just culture shock. And that seeing some seeing a character be empathetic in the 40k universe is almost jarring because there's there's nothing like that in in 40k it's all black and white you know up down and there's no one just saying hey why are we gonna do this because it's the right thing to do this is what my job is right it's like the lion tells you know one of his companions is like like i'm not like i'm a son of the emperor but like i'm not i'm not in charge of my legion i don't have you know the legion behind me so what am i going to do i'm going to do what i think i was created to do which is defend humanity against the dark why because that's what I think my job is, right? Right now, that dark that I can defend against is what's outside the circle of this campfire in the woods. One day, maybe, it'll be the whole galaxy. Yep. One way or the other, that's what my job is, to protect people against the things they can't protect themselves. No, I like it. Well, and, and I always think of the thing you have to remember, too, when you're looking at 40K War for me was I was a big fan of the Soul Drinker series by Ben Counter. And yeah, it was actually a good series. And you get to yeah. the end of it, and it has about the happiest ending you could have in a 40k series. And by that, I mean the last two surviving members of the chapter. And I'm saying this because this series has been out for like 10 plus years, so yeah. I guess spoilers alert. But the last two surviving members, I won't tell you who they are, but two of them survive, uh, are fleeing from Sisters of Battle and Inquisitor by one wounded dragging the mortally wounded one through a portal to go into the warp. So they aren't captured mm-hmm. and taken back and put on trial and tortured and executed. You know, it's like, you know, oh, I mean, but, you know, they ended up in the warp because, you know, that's such a great way to end yeah. the series. It's like, oh, yeah, like that's about as happy as it gets. We're going to go get torn apart by uh, extra dimensional demons mm. because that's better than being, you know, that's put better up than the Imperium a, a mock trial and tortured to death. That's <laughs> like, oh, yeah, great. Welcome to 40K, everybody. It's not great. All right. That's 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 the comments for this month. That's the show for this month. So thank you all for listening to this month's episode of the podcast, uh, The Path to Redemption, The Warhammer 40,000 Dark Angels podcast. Our next episode will come out. It'll be the May episode, unless we have some real spicy bonus episode reveals coming out, like if we get some, no some spicy Dark Angels 10th edition rumors and whatnot. Yep. So please subscribe uh, so you can catch on to that if that happens. Like and comment below. Right? We wanted to see those uh, lion lists. We want to see some... Some fun lion lists, not necessarily competitive, but fun. Like, I want to put it on the board and cackle maniacally as he's running around doing stuff. Uh, and if you're watching us on YouTube or you're listening to us on your preferred podcasting service, come to YouTube and leave the comment. The video will be, the episode will be here. And last but not least, we'd like to thank Purple Planet for use of their music. Until next time, I'm Bailey from Bankless Wargaming. This is Heath with Team Table War Hawaii. Stay loyal, angels. <laughs>